Hey friends, this is Malki Asad and welcome to this special video on my step 1 experience in which I got 271. In this video I'm gonna share with you the resources I used to prepare for this exam, some studying strategies and some tips to keep in mind when you're preparing for your exam. So let's get on. The first thing I want to talk about today is define your target score. Whenever you're preparing for exam you have to know how high should you score on that exam to achieve your goal. Each year the NRMP releases data of those who match into different specialties. So by looking at the NRMP data and seeing what is the average step one scores of those who match into the specialty I'm looking for. So you don't need to score 270 if the average score for those who match into your specialty is 230s. Definitely getting a higher score would make you feel better but it might not help you as much as you expect. The time that you needed to score from 250 to 270 might be more helpful if you used it into research or clinical rotations. Because remember, the goal is not to get a higher score on your exam. The goal is to match into the specialty you're looking for and the program you're looking for. And step one is only one factor in this equation. The second thing I wanted to talk about today is define your timeline. Because definitely if you study more, you would have more time to study more materials and that would increase your score. But again, as I discussed before, you have to weigh, is that time more valuable to be used into research and clinical experience building connections in a system you're not familiar with or to get uh, from 250 to 255 or 260? Which one is going to help you more? This is something for you to decide based on your goals, what specialty, what program you're looking for and advice from your mentors. Now going into one of the most important things when preparing for your step one, which is the resources. As you know, when you start preparing for your step one, you would be reading these experiences of those who studied a thousand books before they went and did their step one, while you see others who studied way less materials. You'll see endless number of books, question banks, assessment tools to study for your step one. Do you have time to study all these? The answer is no. It's impossible to study all these materials. So you have to focus and choose the materials that would help you the most to get the score that you're looking for. And again, the, the study strategy for somebody who's looking for 270 is totally different than the study strategy of those who just want to pass because step one is going to be pass fail soon or get 230s or 220s or 250s. So just keep in mind when you're choosing your resources, all these factors, the timeline and the target score that you're looking for. I'm going to share with you the resources I used and which one I think helped me the most in achieving my score. First, I try to divide the preparation for step one into three stages. The first one I call it building the basis. This stage is very important for those who have studied the step one materials early in their school and they decided to take step one late. By that time, they forgot most of the materials they studied in their first few years of school and they need some kind of preparation before they go into the second stage. So for this stage, you need to start preparing with some books to fill these gaps in your uh, basic science knowledge. For me personally, I used the Kaplan books. I felt that they were very helpful in my preparation for the step one exam. I used some extra books, uh, such as Gold Gym, Pathoma. Some books, I used them just for certain topics. So sometimes I did not un understand a specific concept on, in, in the Kaplan book. So I went and opened another uh, bigger resource for embryo embryology, let's say, or histology, just to look on one specific idea rather than read the whole book. The second stage for preparing for step one is understanding and focusing on the high yield topics. I feel that this stage is mainly composed of first aid plus a question bank. And I feel that the best question bank for step one is you all. So for those who have very good idea from their medical school about basic science subjects, have studied these material very recently or have taken step two before step one, they can go directly to the second stage and start preparing from first aid and you all. One mistake that students do is that they start directly with first aid and they feel that they're not understanding the topics. That is understandable because first aid is more of a review book. It doesn't have the explanation. So that's why I said it's in the second stage. You have to have that understanding from your school or from studying for step, step two. If you're struggling with understanding the concepts of first aid and you have very limited time, maybe consider starting with UWorld. UWorld has the explanation for the questions. I know that some students feel frustrated if they did not answer the questions right, but remember, UWorld is, is not an assessment tool. It's mainly for you to solve the questions, understand how 
the concepts are presented in a question style and learn from it. Other question banks that you can use when preparing for your step one are Kaplan Q Bank, USMLE RX, or Amboss or other question banks available. I personally did not use Amboss, so I cannot comment on that. I used uh, Kaplan Q Bank just in the beginning and I did not find it as helpful uh, as you all and also USMLE RX, I did not find it as useful as you all. So I wanted to focus on you all rather than and do it one more time rather than spending that time on so many question banks and not having the chance to review them. The second stage is the most important one in your preparation for your step one. Because in the first stage, you're trying to understand the concepts, build your base. But the second stage is the one that you will be focusing on the high yield topics, the topics that you will be tested upon in the exam. And going to the final stage in your step one preparation, which is the final review. After you built your basis, you understood the concepts, you focus on the high yield ones from first aid, you all, you trained how to solve questions in, in the exam style, you go and you do your final review. So if you've taken notes from you all, you can review that or you can use first aid as your review book in this final stage. This final stage should be around one month to 20 days from your exam because definitely you will not be able to review everything the day before the exam because the materials are very big. So what you can do is dedicate the last 20 to 30 days before your exam as this final review of most of the topics. Now going to the assessment tools of the USMLE Step 1 exam. The two main ones I used are the NBMEs and UL self-assessment. I know that some students use UWorld as an assessment tool, but I feel that this is a mistake. UWorld should not be used to assess your performance. It's used for you to learn and understand the questions and the explanation of each question. But the UWorld self-assessment is a very good one. I left that to the end and I used MBMEs in the beginning. One thing to keep in mind when you're using assessment tools is to start with them as early as possible. So if you just finished the first stage building the basis, do one MBME and see where you stand. Are you close? Do you need How much time do you need more to prepare for your exam? And then do one every maybe a month or two, depending on how much time you're planning to do for your step one. Uh, you can do between three to five MBMEs. Do both your UL self-assessment. They're very helpful and they give you an idea of your actual score. Both of these tools have the assessment in four blocks. And to make it more similar to the exam, I used to do for two self-assessments in the same day, so four blocks and four blocks, as if it was a real exam. To make it more similar and make myself more used to sitting for long hours and having this stress of the exam, the actual exam. Now I want to talk about some studying strategies that can make the difference between low score and a high score. The things I talked about UOL's first aid is something everybody talks about. Everybody prepares from UOL and first aid, yet they get different scores. How? Because their studying strategies is different. The way they review the information, the way they approach each topic is different. Reviewing the information, in my opinion, is one of the most important things when preparing for any exam. Personally, when I study, I like to read the information. I don't get back to it soon. I let my, my brain forget the information and then get back to it later. Why? Because my brain did not forget the information in if I review it in day or week. Uh, I would allow more time for, for that be to, to be forgotten, which is natural, and use that time that I would be reviewing it the next day to review it later. So instead of using an extra hour to review a page day after I study it, I use that hour to focus on that material later. Because in that way, my brain would, would turn that information into more long-term memory, which is what the exam is testing you. One question I get asked, how many times should I review first aid or you all? As much as you need. Some students might study a material once they need one or two revisions and that's it. Some need five or six. So you need to review first aid annual until you're able to at least retain and memorize the high yield topics. And how can you know that the topic is high yield? When the information gets repeated in first aid, you all in different questions, it shows again and again. This is how you know that it's high yield. The second extremely important point as a studying strategy is notes. How can you take notes when you're preparing for your step one? I know students who take pages and pages of notes when they're studying. For example, from UL to first aid, from first aid to books, or from books to first aid. But always remember, time is limited. If you are using that time to write down notes, that is the time you can use maybe to review first aid one more time or review 
you will want for more time. So be very careful about how detailed your notes should be. Personally, I did not take too many notes. For your world specifically, in order to avoid repeating the whole question bank, which is 2600 questions, you can take some notes that can help you when you're reviewing. So you would re review these notes instead of reviewing the whole question bank. Also, for example, if you want to review some questions specifically, you can flag them and come back to these flagged questions instead of reviewing the 2600 questions. How can you take notes through UOL? Now there is a very cool feature in UOL, which is the notebook. You can highlight the text and put it in that notebook so you don't have to review all the questions when you are doing your revision. You just go to that notebook of pathology, for example, you open it, you review the high yield topics. You can also highlight them in different colors. And this is a strategy I use. You can highlight in red, for example, if it's very important and you were limited on time and you want to review very limited amount of information, highlight in yellow in things. If you had extra time, you would review them. So use these color differences in order to identify uh, different uh, levels of high yield topics. So to summarize everything we talked about in this video, start by defining your target score and timeline. Then see how, where you stand on your medical knowledge. You need to prepare with some books such as Kaplan books, Pathoma, Golgen, or other books before you go and start with the second stage using first aid and your question back, or you can go directly into the second stage. In the second stage, you focus on the high yield topics which are included in first aid and the question back, and in my opinion, New World is the best, but you can try other question banks and see if it works for you. You have to review this information, so based on how fast you retain information, uh, how many, how much time you have, you decide on how many times you need to review your world and first aid. Going into the final stage, you dedicate 20 to 30 days to review the main information that you studied during your preparation. For assessment tools, I used MBMEs and new world self-assessment and they were extremely helpful. Use them early in your preparation. Try to know why you answered a question wrong. Don't just see that, oh, I got 90% on, on the exam and you go forward. Try to look at the questions you did not solve right, see why they were wrong, where, where is something you can fix, and when you go back to prep your preparation, you know where the gaps in your knowledge is. And finally, some studying strategies, starting with notes. Don't take too many notes because that would take a lot of time, especially if you're writing these down. You can use the notes incorporated inside your world. You can take few notes on the first aid because taking so many notes will make it harder to review them first and will take time to write these notes down and study efficiently. For me, that meant studying the material, understanding the concept and going forward. Don't get stuck on one specific page or one specific information. Just go forward. After you understand the concepts, you have the chance to review the material overall at the end because now you have the big picture and then you can go deeper when you're doing your revision. So that's gonna bring us to the end of this video today. I know that the preparation for step one is extremely stressful, it's tedious, but I'm here to help you and provide you with advice to overcome this big challenge in your medical journey. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad or my Facebook page Malka Asad MD. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified whenever I post future videos about the step one exam. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna start making more and more videos about how to study from first aid, how to prepare from your world, what are the details of other resources that you can use, so stay tuned. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos.